Okay, geometry students, I am back with our second lesson, lesson 11.3, so I hope you have a piece of paper out and we can do this together. 11.3 is called Perimeter and Area of Similar Figures. Okay, so areas of similar figures. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is give you a formula. So if I have side of number one, figure number one, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm going to say that's of, and then side of figure two, my ratio so let's say I have one shape like this, and I have a bigger one like this. Sorry, they don't look that great. Okay, let's just pretend they're similar. <laughs> and if this is A and this is B, then the ratio of the sides would be A over B, and we know that. We've worked with similarity and comparing with ratios before. What's different is area, since we're looking at area of polygons here. So the area of figure one over the area of figure two is also a ratio but it's different than you might think. It's actually a squared over b squared. So if you know the lengths and you are comparing them, to find the areas and compare them, you square the lengths. All right, so we're going to look at some examples. Here's number one. In the diagram, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. All right, so if I have ABC here and this side is 8, and I've got DEF here. and this side is 12. Okay, in the diagram they're similar. Find the ratios of A, their perimeters, and B, the ratios of the areas. Okay, so go ahead and write that down, finish that. All right, so perimeters has to do with adding up all the sides. So for A, if I want to find the ratio of perimeters, that refers to just the length. So if I know the ratio of the sides, I'll have the ratio of the perimeters. So I just have to figure out the ratio of the sides. Well, I've got 8 and I've got 12, so I'm going to write 8 over 12 and then reduce that. So that becomes 2 over 3. So the ratio of my perimeters is 2 over 3. Now for area, I take that ratio of the sides, 2 thirds, and I square it. I'm going to write down areas, ratio of areas and that's going to be whatever I had for the sides I'm going to square it so it becomes 4 over 9 okay it's not doubled it's squared so that would be the answer for number one okay number two has to do with bedrooms. Now let's get a little context here. 
I know you all have bedrooms and some of you like to do a lot to decorate them and make them look uh, fun, cool, interesting. Let's say you're a girl, you might like this. It just went away. Where did it go? Not that picture, that's basketball. Okay, let's say you're a guy. So I thought this was a very cool bath, uh, bedroom because it has to do with um, Star Wars. Look it up close. If we see here, we got R2-D2, we've got C-3PO here, we've got um, Princess Leia on the pillow saying, I love you, and Han Solo saying, I know. Remember that famous line? I thought that was really funny. Anyway, let's say you have this cool bedroom and you want to put in new carpeting, okay? So we're going to look at a problem that has to do with that. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave. Now let's see if I have the other one. I don't. Okay, we'll just go with that. All right, so let's read number two. It has to do with the bedroom. Stuart is installing the same carpet in the bedroom oh, and the yeah. den. So, so the I'm floors sorry. of the rooms are similar. So I have one room here. This is the bedroom that Stuart wants to carpet. And that is 12 feet along the one side. And the den is larger. That's 16 feet. And this is the den. Okay, so those are our pictures. The carpet for the bedroom costs $17, or 117 so the carpet for the bedroom, so the bedroom carpet costs $117. Okay. Carpet is sold by the square foot. The question is, how much does it cost to carpet the deck? All right, well, I need to look at my ratios. So I've got the side ratios given, it's 12 to 16. So let's write that down. My side ratio is 12 over 16, and that reduces to 3 fourths. But that's the side ratio. And I want to know the area. So I need my area ratio. The area ratio is going to be 3 fourths squared. So I get 9 over 16 there. Okay. And now with that, I can set up a proportion. So I have... Um, bedroom compared to the den and my area ratio is 9 over 16 and the bedroom I know that cost was $117 and I want to figure out if I'm using the same carpet which has the same price how much the den costs I can just set up a proportion and cross multiply. Okay? So I'm going to do that and I get 9x equals 16 times 117 is 1872 and I will divide by 9 and I get the cost is $208 for the den. Now that would be important when I'm trying to figure out how much I'm going to pay, how much I'm going to budget, can I afford it, all of that. Okay, so my answer is $208. Okay, let's do number three. Oh, no, I'm going to have you do some OIOs. So here you go. Number one.
the perimeter of triangle ABC is 16 feet. The area of triangle ABC is 64 feet. The perimeter of triangle DEF is 12 feet. Find the area of triangle DEF. Okay, go ahead and do that one. You can pause the video. Okay, I'm going to come back and do these and change colors. How about red? We'll make it look like Christmas. Why not? Okay, now the first thing I do is set up a ratio of the perimeters. So I have 16 over 12, and I reduce that, and that becomes 4 thirds. That's the ratio of the sides, as we said earlier. The ratio of perimeter and sides mean the same thing. Now, I need to square that. I can't use that with area. I have to square it first to get the area ratio. So when I do that, I get 16 over 9. That is my area ratio. Now I can use that area ratio to set up the proportion like I did in number 2. So I have 16 over 9 equals, now I have up here 64. Okay? So I have 64 over X because I don't know this is ABC up here and this is DEF down here. I don't know the area of triangle DEF and that's what I'm trying to solve for. So I'm going to cross multiply and I get 16X equals 576. I divide by 16 and I get X equals 36. So that, that is the area of triangle DEF. If I went kind of fast through that, please pause and go back and watch that again. I want to make sure you understand that. All right, let's go back to green and do number three. Okay? I'm going to read it out loud first. A large rectangular baking pan is eight, 15 inches by 10 inches. So I've got a picture. I've got a baking pan. And that is 15 inches by 10 inches. All right. A smaller pan is similar. Okay. The area of the smaller pan, so I have a smaller pan, is 96 inches squared. Find the width of the smaller pan. Find the width of the smaller pan. Okay? So here we go. I don't know what the... Uh, dimensions are here. I do know the dimensions of the bigger pan. Because of that, I can find the area of the larger pan. The area of a rectangle is length times width, which is 15 times 10. So I get 150 inches squared. Now I have that area.
So I'm going to create a, uh, a ratio of my areas. I have 96 over 150. This is the area of the small pan over the area of the large pan. Okay? Let's see if I can reduce that at all. I'm going to rewrite it down here. What goes into both 96 and 150? Well, I could spend a lot of time figuring it out. I'll just tell you it's divisible by 6. 6 over 6, which is 16 over 25. Now look at that. That's going to work out very well. Remember, when I went from A over B to get the area ratio, I squared it, didn't I? Okay, I square it. To go from the area ratio back to the side ratio, I would do the opposite, which is take the square root. Okay, so I'm going to take 620 over 25, and I'm going to take the square root of that. And if I do, I get 4 fifths. Now I know my side ratio, and I can use that to figure out the side of the smaller pan. So this is my side ratio. Okay. Let's reduce, re, let's review what we've done so far, okay? What I did was I <clears throat> created or find the area ratio. The second thing I did was reduce it. Then I took the square root to find the side ratio. And now that I have that, I am going to set up and solve a proportion to find the missing side. Okay? So my side ratio was 4 fifths. And my width of the large pan, this is the small, to the large pan. The large pan had a width of 10. So I'm going to set up my ratio here and cross multiply. So I have 5x equals 40, divide by 5, and x equals 8. So the width of the small pan is 8. 8 inches. All right. Now, that's all we have for this lesson. Here's your homework. I will send it in the email also. Page 740, number 3 through 23 odds, and 27. Okay? But I'm concerned because I know some of you are struggling still with the Chapter 10 review, and I want to go over something with you. <clears throat> Some of the best of you are struggling, so we're going to do one problem from the Chapter 10 review. I so appreciate knowing when you struggle with something, because if a parent hadn't reached out and said, my son or daughter is struggling with this, I never would have known. 
And I don't have that feedback like I do in class. So I really appreciate it knowing when you're struggling with something because I want you all to get A's on your tests, like many, many of you have in the past. Okay? So I'm going to do, actually I'll do two of them, number seven and number nine. So we have this picture here. And I know this is 9a squared minus 30, and this is 3a. Okay, now, from this picture, I know with the theorems I was given that if I have a point out in space that connects to a circle as a tangent in two different places, those lengths are the same. With those being the same, I can set up an equation to solve for a. So I have 9a squared minus 30 equals 3a. All right. Now this becomes algebra. I'm going to use something here called bottoms up. If you were in my Algebra 1 class, this is factoring. And it can be very difficult. But it doesn't have to be difficult. There are just a lot of steps involved. So I am going to do it now, but I'm also going to provide a uh, link in my email to a video to teach you how to do bottoms up. Now, maybe some of you have seen it before and you just need a refresher course, you need a review. That is totally fine. Just watch the video and it will either refresh your memory or it will teach you how to do it this way the first time. You don't have to do uh, factoring using bottoms up. Uh, for some students, it's easier uh, and others like other methods they've been taught. That's totally fine. All right, so let's do bottoms up. I'm going to subtract 3a from both sides, and I have 9a squared minus 3a minus 30 equals 0. Now some of you might be wondering, why are they doing this? We had algebra last year. Well, part of the state standards in geometry is to review these concepts, because next fall in Algebra 2, you will be doing them again. You will be using them again. And they have found that if you review it in geometry just a little bit, it will be much easier for you to remember. Okay, <clears throat> now I have a trinomial with a coefficient here in the a squared term. So that's why I use bottoms up. And bottoms up is part of magic x. So what I do is I multiply this number, a, times this number, c. So 9 times, uh, oh, actually, you know what, the first thing I'm going to do before I start that is I'm going to factor out any common factors. Common factors. We always want to do that. It makes it a lot easier. And that would be 3. So I'm going to take out the 3. Okay, and that will just drop out. So really, I'm just looking at this for magic x, the inside. So this number times this number is negative 30. And I put b down here, which is negative 1. And I ask myself, what are my factors of negative 30 that add up to negative 1? Well, let's add up our factors. Let's write them all down. Now I can have that or I can have uh, negatives. Okay, which two, which pair, which two numbers will multiply to be negative 30 and add to be negative 1? This one right here, 5 and negative 6. Okay, now that so far is magic x. Where bottoms up comes in is I divide by my coefficient here. So I'm going to divide by 3, and then I reduce if I can, and then bottoms up is how I write my factors. 
So it would be not 5 over 3, it would be 3 to 5. So I'll have 3a plus 5. And over here, I'll have 1a minus 2. Sorry, 1a, not negative 1a. I'm going to start that. Ow! Donnie, no! No. That's nice. We have some hitting going on in the other room. Even though my children are older, they still fight just like little kids. Okay, so I have A minus 2. So I take each one and I set it equal to 0. And I solve. Here I get a negative answer. Can I have a negative length? No, that goes away. A is equal to 2. Okay, so that is that problem on the chapter review. Now I'm going to do number 9, and this will be our last one. Alright, this is 9, this is 3, and this is R. Go ahead and draw that picture. Okay, what I know when I have a tangent line, any radius is perpendicular to that line. So I can put a uh, 90 degree symbol there. And I've got a right triangle. So I can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to solve for r. So a I'm going to use as r, b I'm going to use as 9, and c. Now look at here, I've got 3 for this part and I've got r for this part. So I'm going to add them together r plus 3 squared. Okay, so we're going to work it out. I've got r squared plus 81. Now, this is r plus 3 times r plus 3. I have to FOIL in order to get that answer. So I'm going to get r squared plus 6r plus 9. I'll let you work that out here plus 3r, plus 3r, plus 9. Remember, you can pause anytime you want. Now, I need to solve. So I'm going to move the r squared over here. Look at what happens. Woo that drops out. So I've got 81 equals 6r plus 9. And I'm going to subtract the 9. So I get 72 equals 6r divided by 6. Isn't that nice? r is 12. That's how I figure that out. Okay. Now, I haven't decided exactly what's going to happen with your test and our procedures for uh, Thursday or Friday. So I will get back to you about that. But just keep preparing and studying because the test will come. Okay, so have a great afternoon, and we will be in touch very soon. Bye, geometry students.